All right. So first off, I just wanted to um, introduce myself. My name is Becca. I'm with CFH Powerlifting, and I'm going to let you introduce yourself. I'm Kathleen James, <laughs> and uh, I'm a powerlifter. <laughs> <laughs> a pretty damn good one, too. Um, so I wanted to oh, say thanks, thanks for uh, allowing me to do this interview with you today. Um, it means a lot to me that you this privilege so that's first and foremost i appreciate you taking time out of your day and away from your family for a little bit to sit down and talk to me so thank you very much no thank you for asking oh uh, my pleasure um so i'm just going to get started I, I i know i sent over the questions um that i try to ask and we'll just kind of go from there um so i'm going to let you start with just uh, your basic background and what you do in your daily life when you're not powerlifting and that kind of stuff. Um, well, I'm a mom, first and foremost, um, to three kids. Um, I'm also a police officer um, with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Um, and I mean, that's it. Between work and home and training, that, that's my life. I was going to say, you say that's it, like it's not much, but <laughs> that sounds pretty busy. Um, so thank you for your service. Um, thank you. And please stay safe out there, first and foremost. Um, and yeah, that. so that's kind of why I started all of this is I don't, I don't think people outside of powerlifting especially realize how much we as female powerlifters have on our plates. Um, I mean, we are wives, we are mothers. Um, most of us have, and I say most, I should say most of y'all because I am a stay at home mom. Uh, most of y'all have full-time jobs as well. So um, when I say that I appreciate you taking time out of your day to sit down and do this interview, it really does mean something to me. I like, I understand how valuable your time is. Um, so I, when I say thank you, it's, it's not like, it's sincere. It's, it's heartfelt. I, mean, I, I really do appreciate that. that. <laughs> um, so we'll just kind of go ahead and, and get into it. Um, I've asked this question of everybody. It's one that my husband brought up and it's kind of a, to me, it's a really interesting question. Um, you know, most men in the sport grew up watching world's strongest man, um, and things like that, you know, there were men's magazines on every shelf. You could mm. could find men's strongman powerlifting the Arnold anywhere you looked. Um, it wasn't like that for us, for women. Um, so uh, how were you introduced to powerlifting and what was that moment or when was the moment that you decided that you wanted to be strong or was, you know, the initial inspiration, I guess. So, I mean, growing up, um, I grew up in New York and my family, they loved watching, um, it was WWE at the time. So I always watched that and I thought that was cool. Um, I was always, I guess, considered strong in my family. I, as far back as I can remember, my little brother used to keep a journal and one of his entries one day when we found it, we read it and it said, my sister Kathy is as strong as an ox. And <laughs> I didn't even know at that time that that was a compliment. <laughs> I was like, you called me an ox. <laughs> um, I, I didn't really get into power, power pretty late. So I, my birthday was just yesterday, I just turned 44. I didn't get into power listening until my 40s. So um, Tim and I, he trains me, my husband, we got together and he took me to um, nationals in 2017. And I was sitting there watching all, you know, all the guys do it. But then when the females came out, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. But, right. you know, maybe I can try that. So he, um, I started lifting raw actually, and I took to it pretty well. Um, I wasn't really interested in doing any competitions or not so much interested. I was scared. I'll just say I was scared. I was like, I'm not going to go out there. I'm going to look like a dummy. <laughs> not knowing what I'm doing. Um, he came to me, I think it was like November of the 2018 um, and showed me his phone. And he's like, here, I got you an APF membership. You're doing the meet in February. What? <laughs> 
I was like, you didn't even ask. She was like, well, I'm not going to ask you. I'm just going to do it. Because if I ask you, you're going to say no. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I think that's one thing that I... I can't say amazes me because I'm a woman. And so I, I completely understand it. Like we, you know, we have no fear raising kids. Um, I couldn't be a police officer. It would scare me to death, but you know, there's, there's, you can go out and you can be a police officer. Um, I've interviewed uh, Dina Tollefson, who is a nurse, you know, I don't have fear of any of that, but there's, there's something about stepping onto that stage that we're, we're scared of failure. Like, and I'm not, not to say that we're not scared of failure as parents, because let's face it, we make, we fail every day as parents, I'm sure, but it's, yeah. that's not the, we're not scared of that. It's like, we can fix that. Um, it, it just, I guess it amazes me at, as women, how scared we are of stepping onto that platform. And that's part of why I wanted to do, you know, these interviews. I want these younger lifters and, and even the, you know, women that are older than us, happy birthday, by the way. Um, um, I'm 45. So, you know, like women that are older than us that are still scared to step out onto that platform. Like um, there are so many things in this world that we do that we aren't scared of. Um, how did you overcome that fear? I to think it, it again, was, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was just, I was scared, honestly, that I think that whole meet, um, and I, I just, you know, every time it was time for a lift, I, I was like, I'm going to throw up. It, this is, I feel, I just felt sick, but I went through every single lift. I did well. And I actually got best lift, best overall female lifter at that meet and my very first one. And I was like, okay, this, this isn't that bad. You know, it, it actually felt that I was like, I didn't go out there and look like a total jackass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I actually did well. So it, that kind of boosted my confidence. Um, but I still get nervous every single time, you know, they right. say the bar is loaded and it's my first, you know, my first spot. I'm like, oh, I'm going to die. <laughs> 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 you know, the nerves are always there. It's not until... I think I'm done with my squat and my bench and I'm like deadlift. Okay. Now it's time to have fun. <laughs> the deadlift is fun. Like it's my favorite lift. So, and I guess that that's one of the questions that I always ask too, what is your favorite lift? So, um, I, I love deadlifting. Um, but I think right now bench, I've excelled so much in my bench. I enjoy doing that. I used to, it was a time where I dreaded bench day and I was like ugh this is gonna be horrible um but I've I've just done so well and I've picked up on it um so I really enjoy that I, I just like to see how much I can push off my chest <laughs> that's awesome my husband will actually be very excited to hear that because he says that if the answer isn't bench then the answer is wrong but <laughs> I think he's wrong because deadlift's most fun because you just have to pick it up like you you just I, I love the deadlift that's yeah <laughs> um, so, um, I want to talk about the WPOs a little bit. Um, and then I want to talk about the meet that you did at, um, blue collar barbell Shauna's meet for a little bit. Um, what was your biggest takeaway from the WPOs? Like both personally and, uh, just about our sport in general, what, like, what was the best part of the day, the worst part of the day? And I asked that because, um, I know that, just from reading, you know, some of the things that you post, there was a part of you that felt like you had failed a little bit that day. Um, uh, there were some, yeah. some lifts that you didn't hit that you wanted to hit. Um, so I'd, I'd like to touch on that a little bit. So what was the best part of that day for you, I guess? The best part was finishing. That was honestly the best part, not bombing out. Cause that was, I mean, with every meet, that's my biggest fear is I'm going to bomb out. Um, and I don't know why I, I lift well. I, I just think that sometimes we, we doubt ourselves a little bit. Um, and I've come a long way with getting past that. Um, but my, my biggest, my, my happiest moment was actually finishing, finishing the meet. Um, and, and being around all those people that, you know, I follow on Instagram and I, I you know, stop their pages and everything. And to me, like when I see people like Tara Weber and, you know, Amber Hansen, um, Rebecca Roberts, and I'm, I see them and I kind of 
you get like that. Oh, look, there they are. Stroke. <laughs> yeah, That's, I know the feeling. I feel like that every time I get on the phone with one of you ladies. I'm like, oh, this is so much fun. Look how cool this is. You know, yeah, and that's like, I, I want to say hi, but I was like, how do I say hi? You're like, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong with you? Just go say hi. <laughs> no, I totally get it. Um, and, and was there a particular moment that day that that sticks out in your mind um, just about our sport in general um, and and where it's going and I mean I, I ask that question because this my interviews kind of started um, because of everything Dina did that day um, so just overall was there a moment that day that just kind of stuck out in your mind aside from you know the the superstar feeling of seeing the girls that you know the people that we follow on instagram and yeah um you know it was it was nice seeing all the girls cheering for each other i, I thought that was actually you know really awesome it didn't matter who was up there everybody was watching everyone was trying to look you know um and, and cheering everybody on i mean i had a lot of people that like I said, the ones that I follow, people that I don't know, when I'd come back, they'd be like, hey, good job, good lift. And, you know, that was actually awesome because they wanted everybody to genuinely do well. Right. You know, it, it wasn't each individual for themselves. It was like, let's be there for everybody. And I thought that was pretty awesome. Yeah, I think that's something that um, I actually had a conversation with one of my teammates, um, a male on our team. Uh, and you know, that's something that he said that they don't, it's not that they don't have it in men's sports or men's lifting, but they see, he sees it more in women's is, you know, it doesn't matter what our political views are, what our religious views are, whether we're moms or not moms or married or not married. It's like, once we get together as lifters, whether it be in a competition or just in the gym, like none of it matters. Like none of that matters. We, we just become a team. And, um, yeah. you know, I think that's part of another part of the reason that I want to do this. Like I want these young, younger women. And I say younger women because I have a huge group of, um, high school powerlifting is huge here in Texas. Um, and I have a lot of female mm. lifters and like, I want them to keep going. I want them to know that, you know, it's not always going to be as competitive as it is in high school. Like there are people that are going to cheer you on. Yeah. Um, do you see the same? Do you mm -hmm. feel the same um, when you're, you know, at meets as far as? Yeah, I mean, it's as far as just the, the, the support. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think I've been to any meet where I can honestly say I, I, I walked away with a bad taste in my mouth. Um, everybody, as far as the meet that we've been to here, um, we live in Jacksonville, Florida, so the majority of our meets have been in Fort Lauderdale um, or in Tampa. So I've, I've kind of been around the same group of people for the last two, three years, um, but everybody just cheers everybody on every it's like a family which right. that thing that's why i love powerlifting because it is it's like my second family you know we train here at our home gym um with a group and we have parties with them we hang out we we do everything you know and i just think that something like that is hard to find in sports in general yeah yeah um so i guess the same Thing, same question for Shauna's meet. What was um, the September 11th meet that you did up at, uh, was it Blue Collar Barbell? Um, mm -hmm. what, was, what was your best moment that day? Like, I, I think I've already um, part of the answer to this, but I'm going to let you. <laughs> again, the same thing, everybody coming together. But I, so I went there. Um, so with the WPO, I wound up, I wound up cutting weight. And I found out at the WPO that every weight cut is different. I had successfully cut weight and refed and done great at all my meets and my weight cut at the WPO kind of, you know, just didn't go right. So I decided when I went into Shauna's meet 
I was like, two days prior, I told my husband, I was like, you know what? I'm not cutting. I'm going to New York. That's where I'm from. I want to eat. I want to enjoy myself. I want to have a good time. And he was like, all right, fine. So we ate our way through Long Island and New York. <laughs> um, and it came meet day and I felt great. And I told him, I said, I want to hit those numbers that I didn't hit the WPO. I want to hit them here. And, and I did, and I did more than that. So I was super happy with how that worked out. Um, and the, the lifters that were there, it was crazy because Sim said, he's like, this is like a WPO part two because the, the level of the lifters that were there and the numbers that were put out that day were just freaking astronomical. Um, so it was, just, it overall was a super, you know, a great event for a great cause, but just overall the lifting that took place was just, it blew me away. Right. Yeah. There were, um, and, and please correct me if I have my numbers wrong, but didn't you finish it like nine times your body weight? Was that, yes. you? that's, yeah. that's what I, that like that number is just imp like unimaginable. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, yes. So I know we talked about your first meet. Um, was your first meet raw? Yes. So when did you decide to go equipped? Um, so we were, I think, at, yeah, we, um, at the Arnold is where um, the 2020 Arnold we went um, and everything was kind of, you know, questionable and shut down with stuff with COVID. I know um, I was girl crushing on you while we were there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't. So it was that. Um, so actually, so Southern States 2019, I did that one. I got best lifter and um, Tim had introduced me to one of his old lifting friends, uh, Tom Bodenbender. And he was like, hey, how come she's not lifting in gear? And I was like, oh, well, maybe. Um, and then I told him, I was like, okay, maybe I'll give it a try. You know, so the 2020 Arnold, we went, we um, met with Rudy there. Um, I got all, you know, my measurements and stuff. But because of COVID, it took a long time to get my gear. He's like, you know, you couldn't get the supplies for stuff. Right. Um, so one of my training partners, she had some gear that she had used years back. Um, and in August, August time frame, August of 2020, um, I started training in gear. And my qualifier for the WPO actually took place on the 26th of September, a year ago today. So, wow. yeah, so collectively I had one month to train um, in gear. So I think we, we calculated, we, we had 26 sessions between bench, deadlift and squat um, in gear that wasn't mine, that was way too big, but we made it work. <laughs> amazing. And I mean, even, even more amazing is literally in a year, you, you've totaled nine times your body weight in a year. Like, to me, that's just astronomical. Like that's mind blowing. That's. I just, I love it. I, wow. I didn't, it was a sport that I didn't know about that. I didn't think I needed, but now that it's here, I love it. And, and I need it. And you're, and you're damn good at it. Like just, just Thank you. great at it. <laughs> so was that Tim that just said yes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with him. He's right. Um, who are some of your other favorite power lifters, both male and female? Who are the ones that you really enjoy watching? Lord, um, Amber Hansen is probably the, the one of the bigger ones that I love watching because she's just, she's a beast. Leah, um, she's great. Um, you know, Shauna, she doesn't lift so much anymore. She just did a recent bench one, but I, I love watching her too. Um, Mina Avelsworth, she actually was somebody that I followed a lot. She um, lifts raw. Um, her and her husband, Seth, they're 
a little bit further down south, but um, they're a great couple to follow because they, they love training, they love teaching, they love talking about injury prevention. And I like to follow them specifically for the injury prevention because, I mean, they they know what they're doing. They're never, they never really get hurt. So I'm like, if they never really get hurt, maybe I should listen to what they do. <laughs> they might be onto something here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, um, and my husband, I like watching him lift too. Yeah. <laughs> We're well. fond of those guys. <laughs> yeah, I like them. I like them pretty good. <laughs> They're pretty good guys. Um, <laughs> all right. So, and this is something that Tim may have to answer. What are some fun facts about you? What's something that people might not know about you? Well, I like to consider myself. Um, a competitive eater, but I only eat competitively against him because I always win. <laughs> yeah, I always tell him whenever we go out to eat and he doesn't finish his food, I'm like, you're putting shame to the James name. <laughs> you got to clean your plate, boy. Yeah. Oh. So I love, I love eating. Um, that's probably one of my biggest downfalls because I'm like, if I could be like a suit, if I could lift a whole lot of weight, I'd be like, I'll be a super heavyweight and be done with it. But <laughs> obviously, I don't think that's gonna happen right now. And if I was a super heavyweight at five one, I'd probably not live very long. So <laughs> it might make wearing that eight pound uh, belt a little yeah. harder to work every day. Too. <laughs> yes, but no, I'm um, eating. Uh, that's that's probably that's. I don't tell, I mean, people know that I love to eat, but they don't know that I'll sit there and have competitions with, with Tim. Although we did, we had, um, a, you know, crystals, it's like White Castle. Oh yeah. We went and we, we Girl. went and we had a, we had a little competition at, at the restaurant when they were doing like one of their all you can eat. And I won. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I grew up in Mississippi and so I know all about crystal and you put some double cheese crystals in front of me and I will uh, Girl, yes. leave me alone with my mm -hmm. double cheese crystals yes they are the best yeah, yeah. but um, I mean I mean that's it it's nothing really exciting I guess I just I love my family I love my animals you know a great softball player too oh, I'm a great softball player too yes I do I love softball that's awesome. Um, any advice that you have for, um, you know, both young lifters and other women in this, in this sport? Um, for young lifters, I mean, just stay focused and don't give up and don't get discouraged. You know, um, there's many a time that I have, I've had really good training sessions and then I have ones that I literally am in that garage in tears because I'm like, what the heck am I doing? This is just, uh, it's horrible. You know, last week I'm able to do this way and this week, you know, this way just feels like, like garbage, you know, so stay focused and, and don't get discouraged and just, you know, try your hardest and have fun with it overall. Um, and, and I think that's, that was honestly my biggest takeaway, I think, from Shauna's meet. That was probably the most fun I had ever had at any meet I've been at. Um, I had fun. I was smiling. I was socializing. And normally I'm at meets and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm serious. I don't want to talk to nobody. Don't look at me. Um, but having fun, just have fun with it. And, you know, for the females that are in it now, um, you know, the older ones or whatever, um, don't, don't get discouraged and don't let in, don't, it's never, yeah, it's never too late to start. I mean, I started in my forties, um, and you see people like Debbie Dominga, you know, still kicking ass and lifting like a million pounds. Right. <laughs> She's a freaking beast. Right. You know, how old is she now? 60. 60. Yeah. So she's 60 and she's just. Oh yeah, I mean, Donna's 52 and just blew the record out of the water at our meet in Pennsylvania in July. I'm just like, yeah, I mean, there's they're, these ladies, these older women are, are strong. They are strong. And it is definitely, it's never too late to start. 
Although I will tell you that when Shauna told me she was 52, I told her she was lying. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> she does not look like, no, you're not. You're just not. <laughs> um, I, are there any, you know, challenges in life that you've faced that, you know, you have any, anything that you want to talk about or anything like that? just outside of powerlifting, inside powerlifting, just in general. Mm. I don't know, stop, I'm not a superhero. Um, no, um, so I, I touched up on it a little bit on, um, on Facebook one day, just cause I felt like it just needed to be said and I won't go into like great detail or anything, but, um, and this is really not just towards women, it's male and females cause it can happen. It, either way, um, d domestic violence, physical abuse, sexual abuse, financial abuse, all those types of abuses that are there. Um, a lot of people go through them and, and it's left unspoken um, because people are ashamed to talk about stuff like this. It's embarrassing. You don't want to you know, go to somebody and be like, oh my God, my husband or my wife or boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, they're, they're beating me or, you know, they make me have intimate relations with them when I don't feel like it. They force me to do that or, you know, they withhold money from me and they're, it's just anything. So many different types of abuse. I just feel like there's not enough um, attention put on that just because it's such an ugly thing to talk about and I just hope that anybody that read my post if they were dealing with anything like that that maybe they feel a little more comfortable to reach out to somebody because it's nothing to be ashamed of it's not so um and you can overcome it <laughs> I um I'm going to try to hold it together here um I'm actually glad that you brought that up. So my sister uh, was murdered several, no, it's been about 10 years ago um, by her abuser with the knife that she had grabbed to protect herself. And no, no, we had no idea. We had no idea. And so, yes, I, I thank you for bringing that up for, for you know, I, I agree with you. Like, people need to talk, people need to say something. It's okay, somebody out there will listen and somebody out there will help you. And um, sorry. It's, no, it's okay. Yeah. It is, it's, I, I've, I've dealt with some type of abuse my entire life. Um, it's, it, no, not now. I've I actually had somebody who, <laughs> You know, he abuses me in the gym. There you go. You know, I, he abuses I'm, I'm me not, by wasting food when he doesn't finish his yeah, food. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. But um, no, there's there's always somebody to talk to. Right. Always, you know. And I just I just hope that, um, like I said, anybody who's read that, male or female, that it's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's nothing to be ashamed about. Right. Um, even though at that moment in time, we all, I think, have felt that embarrassment or that shame or God, I don't want to tell this person that because then what if they look at my husband or whoever and now they start treating them poorly and then he finds out and then he beats my ass because of that. Sorry. Um, oh, you're good. But, there's so many, there's so many reasons why people don't say anything. Um, and it's true, you know, you don't say anything until it's too late. And then unfortunately that person's gone. Yeah. And, and it sucks. Yeah. And, 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 and it's, it's not your fault. No. It's not, it's not your fault for not knowing. And it's taken me a long time to be able to say that it's not my fault for not knowing mm -hmm. but it also was never her fault either no. um and, and i think i think that's another really big thing there's an embarrassment but there's also a you know it's more than just a shame there's a um um you know 
uh, well, it's my fault. I shouldn't have said that. I knew he was in a bad mood or yeah, I knew he was having a rough day. I should have just been quiet, that kind of thing. So I think it goes both ways. I think, I think if it's too late, you, you can't blame yourself. You, you mm -hmm. don't know what you don't know. But if it's happening, then yes, speak up, man. Um, there's a, so there's a group that I deal with that I would actually, and I don't know if you are familiar with it. And if you're not, I would love for you to get involved with it. Um, it's called pull your heart out. Have you heard of it? I haven't. Okay. So pull your heart out is a, um, a charitable organization, um, that, and I, I'm only, part of it because the girl that's the head judge at all of my powerlifting meets is a big part of it. Um, they mm -hmm. take donations of, you know, money and equipment and everything like that. Their main focus is to help pay for gym memberships for victims of domestic violence so that women can awesome. get into a gym and get stronger and defend themselves, but also rebuild, regain their power, take their power back whether they're still in the relationship and need to gain strength or whether they've come out of the relationship and they need to take their power and their confidence back. Um, I love that. It, yeah, me too. Like, I think it is an absolute, just amazing um, organization. So I would actually, and we can talk more about it, you know, when we're not on here, but um, I would yeah. love to, uh, help have you get involved with them and, you know, see what we can do to help them and to promote that more, because it, I think it's a, it's a huge thing for women to, to have power, you know, mm -hmm. it's one thing to be strong, but, um, to be, to have power is, is so much more to me. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, awesome. okay. yeah. tears are gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I guess, you know, that that's really about all I, I had. Um, I really, again, I really appreciate you sitting down. Um, the last thing I wanted to ask is just, um, is there anything, is there any, I don't want to say one specific thing, but I guess, what are you most proud of in your living career? Um, what am I most proud of in my lifting career? Boy, I, I get, you know, it, it might be corny, but I think what I'm most proud of is, um, and so now here I am going to get emotional. Um, so we've got a little, we've got a little girl and she's two, three. Oh. <laughs> um, I think I am most proud of the fact that she's there to watch me um, and, and see that girls can be strong and that you don't have to, you know, it's not just, it's just guys, girls can be strong, girls can be successful, girls can win trophies. Um, and then every time I bring one home, she's like, is that mine? You know, and she wants to wear it and she's in the gym with us all the time. And when I'm squatting, she'll tell me down, 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 fire, so I can get back up. I think that's that's my shining moment is every time I train or I compete when she's there and I see how happy she is and cheering me on. And um, it's just a great feeling. That's not corny at all. It's amazing. That's, <laughs> um, my, my, we have, um, I have a 15 year old daughter who actually runs the table with me at all of our meets. And, um, when we were planning our trip to Pennsylvania in July, uh, it was just my husband and I were going to go. And, um, I looked at him one day, like we had already bought plane tickets and everything. And I looked at him and I just, I started to cry and he said, what is wrong? I said, I can't run this meet without her. How, how do I sit at that table without her? I don't know how to do that. And uh, we ended up um, just canceling our flight and getting vouchers and driving from Texas to Pennsylvania just so I could have her beside me. So I, I get that. I, I feel that in my soul. Mm -hmm. so that's not corny at all. That's amazing. And I, yes. I love it. I love uh, like that. That's what I want. I want girls to see that, 
you know, trophies and beauty pageants and trophies and powerlifting and trophies and softball and, and trophies and ballet, they're, they're all, we can have them all. Mm -hmm. We can do, we can do it all. So thank you for that. So I'm going to let you get back to your afternoon. Um, thank you so, so much for taking the time to sit down with me today. I really appreciate it and happy belated birthday. Um, thank you. That you had a great day and um, congratulations on all your accomplishments. And I really, really look forward to actually getting to like meet you next time. I won't be so scared to come up and meet <laughs> Hand. Arnold, I was like, oh, my husband's like, just go say hi. I was like, no, can't go say hi. Like, I know the feeling. <laughs> I know the feeling, trust me. I, this still happens now when I see somebody else. That, like I said, I follow, I'm like, oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you very much, Tim. Thank Thanks, you. Uh, <laughs> have a thank good you for day. asking me again i'm like super honored that you did it's awesome well i, I it, it's truly my pleasure truly my pleasure thank you so much y'all have a great rest of your day you do the same and be safe out there please i will thank you thanks bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.